Welcome to Press TV's News Review, where we look deeper into some of the top stories of the day. Stick around. On this news review, Zimbabwe's former president, Robert Mugabe, has passed away at the age of 95. Mugabe took power in 1980 after independence from Britain and remained the country's leader until the 2017 military coup. His supporters say that he spoke for the poor. His critics say he'd become increasingly authoritarian. Let's take a look at this report. Robert Mugabe was born in 1924 in what was then Rhodesia. The country, once a British colony in Africa, was run by a white minority. The former school teacher with seven university degrees was jailed in 1964 for opposing white rule. Soon after his release, a decade later, he waged a bloody guerrilla war for independence. In 1980, he became prime minister of the newly independent country renamed Zimbabwe. In the early years of his rule, Mugabe was praised for expanding social services, including building schools and hospitals. But he was later accused of launching a bloody crackdown on his political opposition and dissent. Mugabe assumed the presidency in 1987, with the prime minister role being abolished. Since then, he has won a series of controversial elections that critics claim he rigged. The turn of the century unleashed a wave of violent land acquisition launched on a platform of reclaiming land back from the white minority. Thousands of white farmers were forced out. Many Zimbabweans agree that the black majority had to somehow take back the land. After all, about 75,000 hectares of arable land was owned by white farmers who make up only 1.5 percent of the population. Mugabe was forced to resign in November 2017 following an army coup. The uprising took place amid tensions in the ruling party between first vice president Emerson Mnangagwa and first lady Grace Mugabe over who would succeed him. Mugabe passed away in Singapore on September 6, where he made frequent visits to receive medical care in recent months as his health deteriorated. Mugabe supporters say he empowered black Zimbabweans. They say taking back their lands from the colonial rules was perhaps his biggest achievement. But according to some, his economic policies were a failure and led to one of Africa's richest countries' economic crisis that finally led to his ouster. Well, joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have Zimbabwean writer and relative of Robert Mugabe, Lloyd uh, um, Masipa, joining us from the British capital, London. Also, editor of Pan-African Newswire, Abiyomi Azikiwe, is joining us from Detroit. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let's start off with Mr. Masipa in London. Uh, supporters of Mugabe say that he spoke for the poor. Critics uh, said that he'd become increasingly authoritarian. How would you describe the life of Robert Mugabe? Uh, well, um, Robert Mugabe's life is uh, a mixed bag, if you want to look at it that way. We should look at... Um, his tenure, uh, you know, in terms of uh, term by term. In 1980, he was the darling of the West, and everybody supported everything that he did. And back then, you saw that uh, over 10 years, he managed to rebuild uh, Zimbabwe, which was coming from a war of uh, liberation with the Ian Smith regime. New bridges were built. Uh, he had a, an exceptional relationship with the Bretton Woods institutions. Um, they um, actually implemented ISAP, of which he followed uh, step by step. Uh, the trouble only began much later when he decided to take the land after Britain reneged uh, from a uh, you know, constitutional uh, Lancaster House agreement that they would uh, fund the land distribution exercise. So it is important that we look at each in terms of term by term, at what stage, what was happening. Yes, we do agree that as, uh, the longer he stayed, the longer th uh, more things went wrong. But we should have a holistic approach. When we look at the narrative, it mustn't be the narrative that you're presenting now that, um, you know, he was a bad person. From 1980, he was knighted by the Queen. War into father 1990, he was still the darling of the West. It's only after the land uh, ex redistribution exercise that he began to be demonized by the international community. So we need to look at this in a holistic manner, look at his legacy holistically. Abiyomi Azikiwe, uh how would you describe the legacy of Robert Mugabe? 
Um, <clears throat> Comrade uh, President uh, Robert Mugabe's legacy is assured. Uh, in the history of Africa, he was one of the uh, great uh, liberation leaders, theoreticians, practitioners who emerged uh, politically uh, during the uh, mid-20th uh, century. Uh, it's quite interesting now uh, to hear the British and the Americans uh, talk about uh, the legacy of Mugabe when, in fact, they never supported him, even during the course of the Liberation War in the 1970s. Uh, there were other political interests inside Zimbabwe that they supported. Uh, even after uh, he won the election, uh, hands down, in 1980, after a protracted revolutionary war, independence was not handed over to the Zimbabweans uh, based upon generosity. Uh, and of course, even after that, uh, they had re they refused, uh, which they agreed to during the Lancaster House talks in 1979, that they would uh, facilitate land reform in Zimbabwe. Two decades went past, and there was no land reform in Zimbabwe. And then, of course, when the government took action in, 20, in 2000, uh, sanctions were imposed on the country uh, by the former colonial power of Britain, uh, the United States, the European Union. Uh, they funded the, the opposition uh, inside the country. They, had, they even requested that former South African President Thabo Mbeki facilitate a military intervention into Zimbabwe, uh, which would airlift uh, the white settler farmers who had been uh, ex uh, expropriated uh, the land in which they stole uh, during the late 19th century. So I think um, his legacy speaks for itself. Um, independence over to Africans. They, they fought for it. All right. Thank you very much, okay. gentlemen. Abiyomizi Azi, QA editor of Pan-African Newswire, joining us from Detroit. And also thanks to uh, Lloyd uh, Matsipa joining us uh, from the British capital, London. And with that, it brings us to an end here on this edition of uh, Press TV's News Review. But do stay tuned. There's plenty more to come here on Press TV. Bye for now.